test we done on Chris today was what we call a 360 degree metabolic profile. Hello, my name is Luke. I am an exercise physiologist and coach at Precise Performance. And we're in Chris's studio here today doing um, a lactate test. It was different to what I was expecting because it wasn't like the traditional sort of rinse yourself completely silly and yep. collapse in the way that I think most of us are probably accustomed to doing some sort of fitness testing. The idea of this is really to get an understanding of your physiology as a whole. Um, a lot of traditional methods, especially around sort of the phrase FTP and training to a percentage of that is um, really just looking at one mat metric and assuming that every athlete's individual physiology is going to be the same, which it's not. Every athlete will be completely different. The way they fuel intensity of exercise, whether it's aerobically or anaerobically, the point at which they're metabolizing fats and carbohydrates is all going to be completely different. And the idea of this is to really get an understanding of where those um, key thresholds sit. And the plan for that is then to put that into a report where we can guide your training through uh, accurate, precise tra training zones um, and just help you understand a little bit more about where you currently are. And the major difference to me is in the past, well recently I've started doing the ramp test indoors on Zwift, yeah. but in the past I would have done the 20 minute max test outside. Yeah. Either of those tests, they are then a calculation from my end number, aren't they? So for the 20 minute test times 0.95 yeah. and it will give you a number, but I know personally that number is sometimes perhaps a little bit ambitious. How does the test that I've done earlier today differ from those two tests? Lactate testing has been around for, for 20 years or so. And traditional testing used to basically be like a ramp test of failure. And the problem is we're understanding a little bit more about the body and the test that we've done today, we've done two pro protocols. One was highly focused on your aerobic energy systems um, and basically understanding of the exact points at which those intensities you go from metabolizing fat into carbs and at which point your threshold occurs and a lot of people are surprised at where they sit based people come in and say oh my FTP is this my critical power is this um, and my zone 2 is this and we test it and it's it's not so this is kind of yeah this is why we want to do to do that part part of the test and then Part two was a sprint sprint test where we're basically finding out this metric called VLA max. So it's basically how fast you can spike your lat lactate or activate your glycolytic system. Um, and we're measuring after increments of that, basically how fast it's going up and also how fast it's coming down. And we can work out your body's ability to clear the lactate then as well. Um, so there's some new words there possibly for a few people. What is your, glycot your glycotic rate? Glycolytic rate. In short, lactate is a byproduct of burning carbohydrates, gly glycogen. Your glycolytic rate is the basically the speed at which that occurs. Okay. Whether you're born a certain way, your phenotype, or whether you've trained that. We saw today a little bit about Chris's training history and how that may have manipulated the data we got now. In short, glycolytic rate is basically the speed at which um, you can burn carbohydrates, which is really beneficial for hill climb events, okay. for crit racing, where you need to sprint out of a bend or be able to follow a move. Um, also, we're looking at that and that can also be too, too high. If someone came to me and said, I'm going for a 12 hour time trial and they came to me and their VLA max or the, their ability to burn carbohydrates was high, I would probably be concerned okay. because for them, their ability at metabolizing fats and riding solely aerobically below those thresholds is the important thing for them. So at some point when I was on the bike, you referenced the three different metabolic zones that I was working in. Yep. Can you detail those a little bit more, maybe even use the results specifically? For sure. Today? So we, in the industry, we call them what we call LT1. LT2 and 
they basically refer to um, key thresholds in a lactate profile that give us an insight into your physiology. So in particular, LT1 is basically the point at which your body goes from metabolizing fats to starting to metabolize carbohydrates. Now, that's important for time trialists, uh, people looking at doing really long events, sportives, we want that to be relatively high. At the end of the day, we're doing an aerobic sport. The second threshold, which is your LT2, is, is a marker that is closely linked to FTP. So this is why when someone comes in, I like to know where they think their FTP currently sits, because from that we can sort of structure a test. Um, but for day, like today with you, we changed that during the test. So yeah. we were we were going through the stages that I thought were suitable. And as we got closer towards your supposed FTP, we were seeing a larger increase than we wanted. So we closed the gaps between each ramp. And from that, we were able to get a more accurate LT2, FTP threshold reading. Um, so that's the aim with this. It's not to have a one test protocol that fits everyone. It's about using the knowledge we know, me understanding you as an athlete a, li a little bit more um, to kind of structure a test and be able to gain that insight into the kind of the three points. Yeah. Um, and because you're having those live readings every five minutes, yep. you're able to adapt it very yeah. quickly and easily, aren't you? Yeah, so I just use a sim simple device like this through blood taken from your ear. I was hoping my kids would run in and I could say, oh, he's just piercing my ears, yeah. but didn't happen. Here's a nice big question for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, how do we take everything we've learned today, implement it into a training program, and then how far in the future should we look to test to see if those improvements have been made? Basically, to break that into two parts, how do we adapt this into your training now? It would be adopting these unique training zones that we've got based on your unique physiology. So not using a certain percentage of FTP, it would be purely based on, well, you're metabolizing fats up until this power. So if you're doing a endurance ride, let's say, or a sportive event, five, six hours long, you need to be staying below a certain intensity because if you don't and you spike your lactate, we're looking at, yeah, it's gonna take a very long time to bring that down. I would personally always recommend to test after the off season, which is why we're kind of testing with you. We have a brief idea of what you, what you want to do next year. So it's ideal to kind of see where you are now. Um, okay. I'd recommend every six months to have, especially if kind of, because over that period you could, your physiology can change quite, quite, quite a bit. And that doesn't necessarily mean in six months time we do exactly the same test we do now. If, that, if your goal is, let's say, an ultra endurance event, it would be pointless to do all the anaerobic testing and um, looking at your VLA max, your gly gly glycolytic rate. If the next six months you're focusing on endurance riding, we would maybe do a protocol next time that is just focused on that sort of aerobic side of things, the, the ability to metabolize fats, and we would maybe hone in on that part of your ph physiology. So I think the main part of this is understanding that there is no one way, no one protocol for every athlete. Yeah. Um, and that's why doing a 20 minute test and time to buy 0 0.95 and saying every athlete is burning fats at this intensity is, is Flawed. Could you talk us from step one, from the moment I got on the bike at rest, through to the end of the test, exactly what the protocol was? Yeah, for sure. So the test we done on Chris today was what we call a 360 degree metabolic profile. So because Chris hasn't been tested in probably about 15 years or so, and in that time your physiology may have changed from the data you got then. So the idea of this was to start really easy. At intensity, we know you're going to be metabolizing fats um, and we just went up in set increments. Uh, we used five minute stages to give your body a chance to acclimatize to that intensity, whether it needed to spike the lactate or it didn't. Um, and then we just went through the intensities until on the data we started to see change mm -hmm. or increases in lactate. And then, as I said earlier, because 
that was faster than I originally expected. We just shortened the gaps between the point you which you started to accu accumulate and the point we reached your fresh, fresh threshold. After that, we took Chris off the bike, sat down in the chair, and we made sure we brought his lactate levels back to baseline. Um, so what we were at before we start started the test. Um, and then we got back on the bike to do um, the sprint test, which was 20 seconds max, straight off the bike, back into the chair, and they basically measured lactate levels at certain increments afterwards for a period of time. And from that, we can see a peak and a trough, and we can work out based on some equations and that basically the, the, the figures I was talking about earlier, like VLA max, lactate coherence, all those things. It was that latter test actually that I found probably the most curious. I, th I think when you're exercising, you can tell when there's a tipping point in your in your system yeah. when you go from burning fat to burning more carbohydrate. But the sprint test and those minutes afterwards where I'd started to feel like I was recovering, but yeah. actually my blood lactate was still going up, wasn't it? And with Chris, we saw the peak at around seven minutes in and it was quite a high peak, which goes to show your potential natural phenotype of being a sprinter throughout your career was probably the right thing. Okay, that's um, a relief. <laughs> yeah, um, probably reflects the results that you got from that. But by sitting in the chair, we were able to understand, basically isolate, because when you're riding on the bike and you're riding aer aer aerobically, so you go hard and you come back down, that obviously the movement increases the, your buffering ability, but we wanted to keep it controlled, the best way to do that is to do the effort and then sit straight back in the chair so that when we retest in six months time, if we do that same protocol, we know nothing's going to change. One of the important things is your trough, so the calming down, the, the buffering of lat lactate. It's a, it's a metric that is often overlooked a lot in endurance sport, um, especially when you're talking about um, racing and road racing and crit racing or anything that is not a steady state effort it's really important to understand that and be able to implement training sessions that ideally improve that part of your physiology if you have the ability to go above your threshold and come back down and it may only take two minutes versus four 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 minutes before you can repeat that effort um, then that's highly beneficial for any non-steady state kind of racing or riding. The beauty of the test that you've conducted today is you've come to my house yep. with some equipment. It's not a huge amount of equipment. Obviously, I have my own bike with the power meter that I train on most regularly. Yep. This is something that you are relatively mobile with, isn't it? Yeah, so we kind of do two services. One is at our, we have a studio based in Basingstoke um, where we have kind of Mainly we do bike fit in there, but we've just opened up a lab. Um, and we have treadmill and bike for triathletes, runners, cyclists. Um, part of the service I want to provide as well is being able to come to an athlete's house or someone's house who is in, interested in this and basically being able to provide the same service with, with them. That does rely on certain things like having a, a setup, as you said, like a power meter and a turbo that works. Um, obviously in the lab, we have a turbo that records power there. So yeah, it's obviously within reason if it's Scotland, unfortunately no, but I would say within the South and the Southwest, yep. it's fairly flexible. Um, so yeah, I can understand your physiology wherever you are. Yeah, that's uh, quite fascinating because when I did it, we talked about 15 years ago, that was in a hospital in quite rural France at the time, Yeah, in a pair of trainers. So it's, things have moved on a long way since then, luckily. Yeah. I'm gonna give myself about six months to see if I can, I just wanna improve my fitness. I want to get back to the level that I was at pre-COVID and I want to understand the changes I'm able to make with the new information that you're going to send through in the detailed report, yep. which I will put on the screen. Obviously, it'd be unfair to expect you to sit here and type that out now, but it's been a huge, the test alone has been a huge learning curve for me. And yep. I find it truly like insightful and interesting wow. because I am a nerd deep down yeah, and yeah. I do still like training to power and I still like having the power meter on the bike. And I mentioned to you earlier that I do have this silly goal of trying to do 
1,000 watts for a minute and that I was going to give myself the time of the strength training. So hopefully I can take the learnings of this test as well to yeah. help try and assess whether that's realistic or not. You've indicated yeah. that it possibly is. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. So yeah. thank you very, very much, Luke, for, that's for coming right. over. That's right. And if anyone has any questions or unsure about some of the things I've discussed, then feel free to message me on Instagram. Uh, it's just Luke underscore Crads. Or and look for, at the beautiful pictures as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or our sort of testing page is at precise dot performance.